Next I'd like to demonstrate how to simulate a simple Taylor Aris dispersion problem in a channel using LD2D prime. For this we'll use a domain that is 200 by 12 lattice units. And that means that uh, it will be effectively 10 lattice units wide on the interior of the channel, and obviously 200 um, across. And what we'll do is we'll put a constant concentration boundary on here. We'll drive the flow through with gravity. We expect a Poisson velocity profile. And right here in the middle at uh, x equals 100, we'll sample the concentrations over the entire cross section and use those, the average of those, to create a uh, breakthrough curve. This boundary will be constant concentration, this boundary will be zero uh, concentration gradient. So let's take a look at the input file. 200 by 12 is the domain size. 10 will give the correct Reynolds number. Choosing a frame rate of 1,000 and 10 different frames. Tau of 0 is 1. We'll drive it with gravity force in the x direction at uh, 10 to the minus 3. And of course you can do this with pressure or velocity boundaries, but uh, be cautioned that things get a lot more, or can get a lot more complicated due to compressibility. If you're interested in seeing results quickly, uh, this is the way to do it. Otherwise, you have to use very low gradients to avoid excessive compression, which can make the concentrations uh, show some uh, kind of unexpected behaviors. Uh, I still believe they're physically correct, but they uh, are, are not in the normal compressible fluid behavior that we're interested in oftentimes. The tau for the substance 1, the solute, is relatively low, so we'll have relatively small diffusion coefficient. And let's see, here's where the rho sigma, that is the concentration of the solute, is set for the in value. Uh, this feature here is interesting. We're going to start the solute at time step 3000 so that the uh, fluid flow has a chance to equilibrate to the conditions that are imposed on it before we begin the solute. We also could turn it off if we wanted to do a pulse, but leaving it minus one, we'll leave it on. Uh, we're going to collect the breakthrough curve data, the BTC data, every 100 time steps, and we're going to collect it at 100 from the, the inflow boundary. Notice there are no boundary conditions on until we reach the solute section down here. We have constant concentration on the west side following rho sigma in from above. That is a concentration of 1, but this is just a switch that turns it on. And on the east side we have a zero concentration gradient boundary. And that should be enough. Let's run this program. And after less than about a minute for this particular problem, we have our results. Notice that we have a new output here, breakthrough curve, size 71 data points, stored in the file in the out directory, sigma under bar btc.m. Let's quickly take a look at the output pictures here. So you can see that this is time 0, time 1000, time 2000 time 3,000, and finally when we reach time 4,000, the solute is already halfway across the domain, 
and it continues uh, through the rest of the time. Let's take a look at this. And you can see the outline of the Poissal parabola here as shown by the solute. Now we'll go to MATLAB and if we type sigma BTC in the correct uh, directory, the out directory, we should see the breakthrough curve information. Notice it says it's at between time 3000 and 10,000 in steps of 100. So there are individual points here are not shown. But you can see that we have, uh, this is what's known as the resident concentration, going from 0 to 1 in this case. And this here is known as the flux concentration, which is, as shown here, concentration times the velocity minus the dispersion coefficient times the concentration gradient divided by velocity or that sum divided by velocity. And in this circumstance, these two will be approximately equal. That's shown here. They overlie each other uh, basically perfectly. They can start to separate under different conditions. So next we'll go through the analysis of these data and the test to see if we are able to reproduce the Taylor-Aris expected dispersion coefficient for this problem.